nice and warm. It's really early in the morning. I'm getting a bit of a late start, but dawn is just breaking. Today's the day of serious business where we get to light the oven and burn it for about six hours so we can bake some bread. It seems like a lot of time, but a fire for six hours in here will heat this for another eight hours with an optimal bread baking time of about two hours. But in that two hours, we can bake a lot of bread. Last night's pizza fire preheated the oven and has kept it warm. And that's a great first start to this morning's burning. Sure, we could have kept the fire going all night and baked right now. But that would have meant we would have been up all night too. And who wants to do that on a Sunday morning? If I hadn't lit the fire last night, which was a small fire, built up slowly over a, long, over a short period of time, two hours, I'd have to be very careful lighting a fire this morning, because too hot a fire could crack the oven if it's heated up from being cold. So today I have the luxury, because it's already warm, of really getting a hot fire going fast. And for that I'm going to be using pine, fir, and some maple chunks. The maple chunks will give the fire length and durability, and the pine and fir will heat up the oven quickly and allow the oven to really accept some heat. I can also get away with using some much bigger chunks right off the start this morning instead of burning small pieces up front. burn big pieces first and get the fire nice and hot for about two or three hours in one initial burn. Then I'll start using smaller pieces which don't take as long to burn up until the time that we actually rake the coals out to bake which will be about the six hour mark. I'm going to put a few pieces up front just to dry out. They got left out and they're wet from the dew. The key is with an oven like this is to pack it solidly so that it burns in one go about two or three hours from front to back and side to side and almost dies out and then you start adding more wood. If you add the wood too early once it's loaded it'll just choke the fire and it won't burn as efficiently. I've actually got this fire back a little too far from the entry. I really want it out here another foot, but this will work because the oven was preheated last night. The key to this oven's design is that the chimney is actually built outside the oven's opening so that the door, when in place, can seal the heat in, but when it's off, the smoke can rise up and out of the chimney. Another key feature is this ash slot so that the oven can be raked out and the coals can fall down this slot to a space below where they burn harmlessly. This helps keep any penetration into the enclosure of the oven outside, allowing the oven to stay hot once the coals are raked out. 
Well, we're about five hours into the burn. The first burn and a second amount of wood have burnt completely down. We're just coals. And I'm gonna load the oven up now with some very fine pieces of pine with the idea of giving the top of the dome of the oven a little bit extra boost of heat and give, uh, sorry, my ear is burning, it's, it's hot. I'm about three feet away from it and the, the air coming out here is really hot. It's probably two, 3,000 degrees, 2,500, 3,000 degrees in the oven right now. So we need to get the top a little hotter and store some extra heat up in there. Give the hearth a little bit more of a boost of heat. Just give a little bit more wood uh, for about a half hour and then rake the coals out and then the oven has to sit for an hour. I'm gonna load from the back and work my way forward. So I'm gonna throw these sticks, they're about two foot sticks all the way in. The pine is a really sappy wood. It's very light, this is very well dried and it should just give a final boost. This thing should roar to life in a minute now. The night before we begin baking, we make a dough starter, known as a biga, out of flour, yeast, and water. On baking day, we mix this with water, a touch more yeast, and salt. Would that be a standing arm mixer? It's a diving arm mixer. Good job. Dough cam. Then more strong, or bread flour, is added and mixed in to form a dough. The dough is kneaded until it is smooth and elastic. The amount you see here will make around eight baguettes. The dough is put back into an oiled bucket and tucked in to rest for a few hours. All of this time, it is developing flavor. After the dough is risen, it is knocked down briefly kneaded, and then cut into lumps, ready for an initial shaping.
Each lump is weighed to be sure the loaves are as close to the same weight as possible. Floured cloths are readied to hold the dough in its second rise. Once the lumps are shaped and have rested, they are ready to fashion into loaves. Formed loaves are covered to rise for an hour before baking. Well, it's incredibly hot standing here in front of the oven. We've had about a six and a half, seven hour burn time. The coals are finally settling down on the hearth. I'm just going to even distribute them out for about 10 minutes over the hearth and then I'm gonna rake them out and seal up the oven. It has to have an hour of rest time so the hot spots can even out and the temperature can lower because right now it's well over a th uh, 1500 degrees in there and I need it to be down towards seven eight hundred before we actually put in the baguettes. <laughs> If I can get a shot of it in there, but the heart is glowing red hot. That's red and white hot brick. I've stacked the coals up in front of the door to create a kind of heat buffer while that center heart point that is so red hot evens out a bit.
down rapidly, but that should be good. Pretty good, looking like they could all go a little bit longer. Listen to a cur crack. That's the sound of perfect crust. Ooh. Well, it's nice burning the oven on such a beautiful day as this. I do wish I had built this into the end of our house. Not only would it have helped heat the house in the winter, but it would have made those rainy day winter baking excursions much more pleasant. we baked 16 baguettes, five cookie trays, five baking trays of chocolate chip cookies. Now we've got eight sandwich loaves. A pork roast, a pork shoulder roast is in. And we're about to bake three dozen muffins. After 
after over an hour of baking, the walls and hearth of the oven have only just come down to 450 degrees. Perfect time to bake muffins and bars that take the 400, 425 to 375 degrees.